Once the engine is removed, I will use the lift to assist me to remove the transmission. The engine lift you see me using was purchased at a local farm store and cost $150. This was one of the most useful tools I have used on this project. I like to keep all of the bolts, nuts, screws, and any other fasteners together so I know where to find them when I need them. Most of the transmission bolts and nuts will be used when the new engine and adapter plate are assembled later. I have decided to replace the old transmission with a new one as well as the CV joints after taking a closer look at their condition. It is a good idea to replace all old belts, hoses, and clamps to be sure they won't fail on the road. Even under perfect condition with all of the proper tools, and a suitable place to work, there will be things that slow me down. With ample planning, problems can be minimized. I will always be aware of pinch points and drop zones for my own safety. Keeping tools clean and in working order will save you time and can prevent accidents. I wanted to build this project using items that are available to everyone to prove that it is possible to increase miles per gallon of any vehicle. Once I have the majority of the wiring removed, the transmission, the engine, and the axles, I will clean the inside. What we're going to do now is take some paint Put it around the edge of the transmission, around all of the transmission bolts, holes, and the center. And then we will place it on poster board. Here is a piece of foam I use under the poster board. This will ensure a nice clean transfer of paint. And we're ready to go. And I'm gonna push all the way around, pushing into the foam so I get good transfer. Once that's done, I'll try to lift straight up, remove the transmission, and see what we have. I also purchased a set of basic mechanics tools. Since most of today's automobiles use metric and standard sizes, this was a good investment. There is nothing more irritating than spending time looking for tools, so I made sure my work environment was set up so I had access to the tools I needed. What we have is a good transfer. We have a nice pattern all the way around. The center of the transmission is also there. That's very critical. Okay, we'll set that there to dry and we'll remove any of the excess paint around the perimeter. I'll be doing the same thing to this as I did the transmission. This is the section that mounts up to the engine. Okay, I feel pretty confident that I got good coverage there. This one's a little bit easier because it's much lighter. I happen to know where the top of the engine is and where the top of the transmission is. I'll align it as close as I think I can and we'll worry about the rest as far as accuracy goes a little bit later. This part is the bell housing that was removed from the engine and will not be needed because there is one built into the transmission. Okay. Good placement. Press firmly to get that transfer of paint onto the poster board. Once you feel confident about that, try to lift it straight up. Here's what we have. The transmission and this part will mount up to the engine. Now what I'm going to do with this is let it dry and then I'll take it over to my brother James and have him take those measurements. Now that I have the engine compartment cleaned out, the transmission ready to go, 
the template for the new transmission in process, ready being made. I'll put the new transmission in, get it bolted up, get the axles ready, and hopefully by the time I'm done with that, I'll have a new adapter plate to match the transmission and the new engine. One important step that will have to be done is the switch from gas to diesel in the fuel tank. The fuel will be drained and recycled. Biodiesel or diesel will be added to the tank. This car does not have a fuel return and the diesel engine requires one, so I need that as well. I have determined that I will use the existing fuel pump and regulate the pressure. This car supplies up to 10 times the needed fuel pressure, so I will add a pressure regulator. I'll slowly lower the transmission down, getting it into position so that I can put the mounting bolts back in. By using this replacement transmission, the speed will be around 70 miles per hour at an engine RPM of 3400. The RPM at which this engine runs the best is around 2800 RPM, so at 65 miles per hour, the engine will run most efficiently. This is the engine that we're going to be using to power this vehicle. This engine is rated approximately 21 horsepower. Now I know what you're thinking, it's not enough. Well, we're going to combine that with the best features of an electric motor. The electric motor will help assist this engine when it needs extra power, maybe going up hills, maybe accelerating from a stop. This engine should be able to get us approximately 55 to 60 miles per gallon. In addition with the electric motor, it may go up. So, we're gonna get this ready, but first we're gonna go see how James is doing. We start out by placing an aluminum plate onto the milling machine in the proper location, much like this one. Then, the program that was written for the adapter plate is loaded into the computer. If you look at the small window, you will see the program interface. This is controlling the machine to create the adapter plate and is what is displayed on the computer screen. On the left side of the program interface, you can see a readout. This is a readout of the actual location of the milling bit. On the 